Right, this is it. So this is the Beast pre-workout. Raspberry Ripple flavor. Now I did a, a load of testing when, the, when we're doing sort of like the R&D of this product. And I, I just found that the Raspberry Ripple flavor was the best one. I've try, tried every single one. I put a, a lot of sort of thought into the, into the ingredients. So it's gonna be a pre-workout that lasts for you know, it's going to give you the pump from the first rep to the last rep and it's designed to last for a good couple of hours. So this is something that with me, with me being the strong man and, and sort of training, I would train for three or four hours sort of every day. And what I find is most of the time I'd have a pre-workout and after half an hour I'd start, I'd start crashing. So what sort, sort of formulated this so it lasts a bit longer, I think mean, that's super important and basically it's a bit more of a slow release sort of thing so uh pretty proud of the products done a lot of testing i've had a lot of people sort of test it for me and they've got some amazing reviews and feedback so uh, i'm excited to see what you guys think of the beast pre-workout What's up guys, Derek, moreplaysmoredates.com. Today we're gonna to be talking about Eddie Hall. Um, a lot of people have been asking me about his new pre-workout. He posted recently, the My Protein Beast range is now live. This limited edition collection is something I've been working on for over a year now to get perfect for you guys. Link in bio. So here he is looking pretty uh, much leaner than you've probably seen him before and athletic, hitting the old shoulder press. Um, so here we go, Beast the pre-workout and Beast the all-in-one. He's just raging out on the fucking bottle. Here he is, the pre-workout, Eddie Hall, unlock your inner beast. So we have it at 36.99 pound sterling currency. So in US dollars, we're at about 50 bucks, apparently, according to the conversion calculator. Um, so we have one flavor, raspberry ripple, and we have 20 servings. Um, let's see, pretty cool looking bottle. Okay, so down to the product overview. We've teamed up with Eddie the Beast Hall to bring you the ultimate pre-workout formula with added carbs in a limited edition raspberry ripple flavor. It's time to unlock your inner beast. We know you need the right nutrition to fuel your workouts. That's why unlike most pre-workouts, we've added carbs from Dextrose and Carb 10, which are a key source of energy for your body, supporting your training and post-workout recovery. The pre-workout, in all caps, is created using an explosive blend of caffeine, creatine, and tre trending patented ingredients, including Synactive and Glycercise, also known as Glycer Pump, delivering the caffeine boost you need to push your body further and see better results than ever before. It is designed with creatine and caffeine to help you break barriers. Whatever your goal, morning or night, the pre-work, <laughs> morning or night, fucking caffeine. The pre-workout pushes you to accomplish more, rep after rep, set after set. So I would not advise taking this at night. But anyways, uh, key benefits. Unlock your inner beast. That's the number one benefit. Limited edition flavor, 200 milligrams caffeine, four popular patented ingredients. Why choose it? Uh, whether you're smashing a body weight circuit or about to hit the weights, the pre-workout is packed with creatine and caffeine to help you fire in all cylinders. Super powerful mix of caffeine, 200 milligrams, fuels your workout, helps you exercise for longer. So obviously we know the stim junkies are gonna fucking hate this one, but it is ultimately a straight edge brand that isn't trying to push the envelope too aggressively. Even in the caffeine dosage, and frankly, I don't know if there is caffeine limitations on like UK-based pre-workouts or not. Like if, for example, if you look at energy drinks in Canada versus in the US, like there's clear disparity between what is allowed per like unit serving. Um, let's see, unique blend of carbs from dextrose and carb 10. The pre-workout will have you ready to take on any workout. We've also included four popular patented ingredients, bioperine, also known as patented piperine from black pepper extract, astrogen, the super low dose astragalus extract and uh, ginseng combo that apparently just enhances the fuck out of things. Synactive glycer pump makes the pre-workout so unique. Plus it's been packed with a blend of essential vitamins, including niacin and vitamin B12, which help to reduce tiredness and fatigue, help you to stay on top of your game session after session. But that's not all. We added vitamin C, which contributes to normal functioning of the nervous system. Thiamine, okay, so vitamin C, I'm not like huge on. Reason being, Having like, I don't know, like uh, vitamins or antioxidants in uh, pre-workouts, like to be honest, for me, seems like something that you're essentially attenuating the stress and damage induced by weightlifting, which is kind of like, it's something that's needed to facilitate muscular recovery and progress is having that like damage and like stress response. So having like reactive oxygen species being cleaned up 
you know, when you're mid-workout or having like the inflammatory response of training like attenuated or dulled down, like to me, seems like could be counterproductive and there is some literature to suggest that it actually is counterproductive. So that's kind of why I avoid things like vitamin C in pre-workouts. But anyways, thiamine, which contributes to normal function of the heart, iron, which contributes to normal cognitive function. Would I be putting an iron in a pre-workout? Probably not. So you can always stay one step ahead. Um, all right, so suggested use um, ingredients. Where the fuck is the label? No label. Oh, this is the label. Um, oh, this is not pleasant to read. Uh, like, I guess it breaks it down, but it's like a fucking Word document table. Um, let's see, active ingredients. Okay, so estrogen, 25 milligrams. Um, like, for again, like for estrogen, like, I like astragalus as an ingredient. I also like um, ginseng as well. These are things that I actually utilize in our products. And I have a dedicated astragalus extract product and you know, it looks promising even in um, like for kidney support specifically, but as well from a anti-aging perspective, perhaps from a telomere aspect, but from like a significant absorption of like other ingredients, I would like just get the fucking astragalus extract is like what I would do personally. Like, is there some sort of constituent of it that is specifically isolated here that's going to be so much more beneficial than just getting an efficacious dose of astragalus extract in via the separate supplementation? I don't really know. Ginseng as well, you know, like these dosages cumulatively are like fucking tiny. Like you're not actually getting the dosages that equate to the benefits you'd want to get from this outside of the bioavailability enhancing aspect. So I don't know, like, I guess ultimately if it is, has the clinical support that isn't just funded by the company specifically only, and that's the only reason you're utilizing it, and you don't want the like double support of having the actual like other health benefits from this stuff, then, you know, I guess fine. That's uh, reasonable and seems to be in line with one of the, uh, you know, the recommended dosage spectrum of this ingredient. Betaine anhydrous, um, a very, very good osmolite and uh, methyl donor that I also have um, pretty much on a daily basis. 2,500 milligrams is an efficacious dose. Biopairing the CYP3A4 and P glycoprotein inhibitor. This is something that may inhibit the breakdown of uh, you know, certain stimulants in the product as well as enhance the bioavailability of certain things. Um, for enhancing just caffeine specifically, like I don't know if that's necessarily becomes that useful, especially when you already have the estrogen in there too, which presumably is used to enhance like the amino acid component of this more so than the bio pairing would be using more for the uh, like stimulatory component, I guess. Like, I don't know, like I think caffeine's just fine from like a pharmacokinetic aspect. I don't know if I necessarily need to inhibit. You introduce uh, black pepper fruit extract to enhance it. If I had some like exotic stimulant, I was trying to inhibit, you know, like MAO or some shit, then maybe I would be looking at it. But for this, I don't know, like maybe just use more caffeine or use like a di-caffeine malate or something. I don't really know. But anyway, 200 milligrams caffeine, you know, a lot of people aren't going to be happy with that dose, but you can titrate it accordingly, I guess. It's just, you're going to be eating into your serving count pretty significantly. HMB, a highly controversial um, compound that seems to be, uh, you know, a bit back and forth in terms of if it's efficacious or not. Like personally in a pre-workout, any kind of like natural anabolic it doesn't have like an acute stimulatory reaction that's going to induce adrenergic signaling. It's going to induce like acute force production changes. That's going to get my, uh, you know, sympathetic nervous system fucking firing. It's not going to really do anything acutely as far as I'm aware that is going to be that useful. So for me, like, I don't know the purpose of really having this here. Like, I guess hypothetically, like, I guess there's no reason not to, but I mean, like, I would rather see a higher dose of like acute performance metric ingredients rather than something that would be separate as like a uh, adjunct anabolic agent. Um, and HMB seems to have lacking literature to support it. Granted, there is lacking literature to support things like ectosteroids and shit. So, I mean, ultimately some of this stuff is going to come down to personal um, anecdote. But personally, like as far as I know, it's not like there's a novel mechanism by which HMB works. Like as far as I recall, it's like a comes from leucine essentially, which ultimately if you're looking at a study that shows HMB shows like significant increases of muscle protein synthesis or blah, blah, blah. It's like, well, is that just the fact that it's a fucking like side tangent of leucine essentially? Because obviously leucine is like the number one stimulator of mTOR. Um, and if you're just like a metabolite of leucine and there is some like, uh, you know, like reverse conversion potential or something like that, like maybe you're just looking at like expensive fucking leucine here, you know? And again, is leucine necessarily something I want in my pre-workout? 
You know, that would be maybe something I'd look at a post-workout for, for recovery or like uh, intra with EAAs potentially. But I mean, here having like expensive leucine in a pre isn't like at the top of my priority list. So I wouldn't even really compare this to ecti steroids at all because something that interacts through estrogen receptor beta versus like a fucking amino acid, there's like a giant disparity between the MOA on that. So this is not something I would even put in the same category as things like um, ecti steroids or other like natural like uh, plant anabolics or anything like that. Iron at six milligrams, like personally, I think if you're gonna get iron in, just get it through your diet. It's not very hard to do. I don't, I would not be marketing a performance enhancing benefit of supplemental iron. And personally, iron seems to be pretty GI disturbing as a oral supplement in many individuals. So like, I don't know, unless you're like vegan or some shit, like I don't really know the purpose. Like may, is Eddie Hall vegan? Like what, I don't know, like maybe this is specifically tailored to him or some shit. I would, I don't know. L-glutamine, um, you know, for digestive support, you know, potentially useful as a like pre-workout ingredient, not something I really prioritize. L-tyrosine, 750 milligrams, a neurotransmitter precursor, which is useful in my opinion, helps with mood elevation, motivation, productivity, um, and it's like a non-stimulatory way, or at least a non like directly stimulatory way to kind of like enhance mental function, um, drive a little bit, and it's a good ingredient. 750 milligrams is what I'd consider like bare minimum efficacious. Niacin at three milligrams, undisclosed if it's nicotinic acid or like, uh, you know, like non-flush or like what this is exactly. I don't know, like is that, it's gonna be useful for modulating your lipid parameters a bit potentially. I don't know how useful it is. Like it's almost like some of this stuff is like health supporting it seems like. Like for me, I don't really, Con like why would I, I don't want vitamin C in my pre, I don't give a fuck about niacin, two grams of glutamine personally, like I don't know, would you see a performance enhancing benefit from that? L-citrulline, something that is obviously the primary NO precursor in this product. Four grams is like bare minimum efficacious, but again, here they have L-citrulline malate at four grams too. So like cumulatively, you're probably looking at like six to six and a half grams of L-citrulline in total, which is good. Um, it doesn't disclose the ratio of malic acid to L-citrulline here. So like I can only assume if they had a two to one, they would have marketed, marketed it as such because that's a more advantageous and expensive ratio, I would imagine, to include like not having a, if you have a one to one, like obviously you're getting more malic acid relative to a two to one, like you'd be getting equal amounts of citrulline and malic acid in a one to one versus a two to one would be like, you know, fucking the math on that's gonna be like what like 26 6, 6 milligrams versus 13 33 milligrams if it was a two to one versus if it's one to one you're getting two grams of each which obviously isn't as nice you know you want to get more l-citrulline free form so for me i'm just gonna assume this is one to one because if you had a two to one you would probably fucking disclose it because it's the better version so anyways l-citrulline one to one presumably so we have two grams of l-citrulline here with four grams here, so we have six grams of L-citrulline, maybe with two grams of malic acid, one gram of glycer pump, which is uh, like, I like to see, like ultimately when you're looking at like endurance and like hyperhydration, the recommended dosages for glycerol, if you really wanna see the actual like performance enhancing dosages from an endurance context and like a significant hyperhydration context, go look at our glycerol breakdown on, uh, I did a video on it a while ago. But um, it doesn't mean it's not a reasonable adjunct as a hyperhydration agent in a pre-workout, even if it's more of like, like frankly, it's almost like a novelty ingredient at these dosages for like acute performance outcomes, but maybe you get more mind-muscle connection, you get a bit more pump out of it. And ultimately like that is what a lot of us are seeking at the end of the day. And for the real like endurance junkies and hyperhydrating seekers, that's where you look at like mega dose glycerol, where you look at uh, like what I described in my video, which I'll put up a card in the corner to my glycerol breakdown. Um, beta alanine, 6,400 milligrams. Wow, playing no fucking games, bro. This is the efficacious dose that you would wanna have on a daily basis. And I think I may be able to see why now they have the 200 milligrams of caffeine because this seems to be something they want as a daily driver that you can use every day, even if you're not working out, presumably. So this would be something I imagine they'd want you to use, again, with six grams of creatine too. Is that necessary? You know, probably not. You know, most people are gonna be fine with just five, but again, there are certain aspects that would justify upwards of 10 potentially. There are individuals with 
MTHFR polymorphisms or individuals who otherwise weigh more and have more fucking muscle. There are other justifications for higher doses of creatine and the general broad spectrum, three grams is enough for everyone is fucking dumb. It is not the case. That's like saying everyone needs the same protein intake. Like, no, the guy who is twice as big as the other guy doesn't need the same protein intake as the other smaller guy. So why the fuck would his creatine intake be exactly the same too? Ashwagandha root extract at 300 milligrams does not have a disclosed standardization to what constituent of withanolides. 300 milligrams, that is a efficacious dose, but I mean, like, I don't know what the standardization is. Is this a 5%? Is it a seven and a half? Is it a 10? Is it a fucking nothing? Like, I don't know. Is it just broad spectrum? I don't really know what this is. So I can't really comment. All I can say is the 300 is reasonable. Is this again, an acute ingredient that's going to be useful pre-workout? Not necessarily, but is it a daily driving ingredient that could be useful as a, you know, sustainable long-term supplement? Potentially. Do I want to inhibit like cortisol necessarily like pre-workout acutely? Not really. Um, so again, I don't know about the timing of this, but certainly from a daily driving aspect, like they want you taking this, I would think on days off too. So I don't know. Anyways, creatine at six grams, obviously efficacious beta alanine at 6,400 at the main, the carnosine, um, driver of this product and 6,400 is going to, if you're taking it every day, you're going to get that saturation of 179 grams within a month, which ultimately is what you should be striving for if you want the maximum outcomes from this ingredient. And this is definitely a fucking good dose, dude. It's not, uh, yeah. The, do you want the butthole itch or what? For the extra two to 3% boost in the endurance output? You know, some people definitely, 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 definitely. Some people definitely justify that uh, trade-off, you know? And some people, again, depending on the context of what you need performance enhanced, do you need like a 10 to 12 rep set in the gym enhanced, like the majority of us taking pre-workouts, or do you need shit like one minute plus of like endurance related effort being enhanced? Like that's, again, like the justification should be based on the context of your training. Cause some people don't really require beta alanine in any context whatsoever. And they're just getting fucking itches unnecessarily. And a lot of people too are using it so intermittently that it's fucking essentially useless. Um, but for people who are trying to get, like this guy's a strong man and he was doing, you know, like events that required output of like multiple minutes, presumably. It was like acute fucking movements, but he was like moving around like farmer walking shit. I don't know. So like beta alanine, you know, definitely useful in that context. Um, and 6,400 is the max, not the max efficacious dose. I mean, like obviously you could have more and like build up to the saturation point quicker, but like what we see in the industry, this is kind of like the pinnacle of, you know, dosages in a pre-workout. And lastly, we have a uh, synactive, which is a, uh, I believe a patented senolytic, which if you haven't looked into senolytics, this would be like something to clean up senescent cells. So again, once you have, uh, a certain amount of cell division, you reach something called the Hayflick limit where you end up with senescent cells that are basically just like inflammatory in nature and are kind of like just causing hay mayhem in your body and are, you know, actually kind of dangerous to have, you know, residually sitting around. And this is where you would have things like autophagy come in, you know, clean up senescent cells, or you have things like senolytics that sort of come in to uh, enhance these processes. And that's, you know, one of the primary drivers of the efficacy of quercetin, um, which is an interesting ingredient that seems to have uh, multifaceted purposes, but from like an acute, I don't know, performance outcome scenario is 50 milligrams of synactive going to move the needle in a senescent cell aspect. I don't really know. I don't have enough uh, experience with this ingredient, but personally, like quercetin is uh, my go-to senolytic that... I use um, intermittently. And uh, yeah, that's kind of my stance on the overall pre-workout. It is for 50 bucks. I don't know, like I would consider this a like a reasonable daily driver for sure. But again, it would depend on the context of your needs because a lot of people are gonna find this low stim as fuck. A lot of people are gonna find this underdosed in certain vectors. Like again, from the NO precursor aspect, you're kind of covered, you know, you have over, you have the six grams of L-citrulline in there. Um, from the hyperhydration aspect, you have the creatine, you have the glycer pump, you have the betaine um, from a endurance aspect, you have the beta alanine at the fucking more than good enough dose for sure. Um, like it's not bad, dude, not bad. So anyways, that is uh, my overall stance on the pre-workout. Um, could be a decent daily driver. And you have to keep in mind, even though it's 50 bucks, which is fucking expensive, you know, objectively, 
Supply chain is fucked, dude. It's so fucked right now. The cost of creatine is like 10x what it was, you know? Like, just to put it in perspective, the cost to make a pre-workout now, even if your economies of scale are in play and you're like a big fucking fast growing company, it costs more to make a pre-workout now when you have, when you're producing hundreds of thousands of units at a time than it was to create like a minimum order a handful of years ago with the exact same fucking ingredient profile. So don't be surprised if shit gets more expensive across the board because everyone's fucking hurting from the supply chain aspect. There is complete shortages of ingredients. Shit is going dry in some places. People are totally out of stock of stuff in some places. And basic shit like creatine getting way more expensive. L-citrulline getting way more fucking expensive. A lot of this shit is becoming very, very cost prohibitive to a point that you might see a lot of companies out of stock for a fucking while, dude, or very, very, very inflated in their price. Like inflation across the board is hitting everyone and the supply chain is a fucking disaster right now. So I don't blame them for being at a 50 buck price point for this profile personally. So, you know, objectively, you know, this was seen as expensive maybe like a few years ago, like now, not as much, dude. So it's unfortunate, but that's the fucking scenario we're in right now. So anyways, that is my overall stance on the pre. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. All the comments help the algorithm. They're much appreciated. Like, subscribe, check out my blog, moreplacemore8.com. Follow my Instagram, at moreplacemore8. Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts. If you want to support the channel, you can check out anything I'm associated with in the video description below. And that is it. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.